clue. <laughs> hey, Vanessa, what's up? Good to see you. Great, great to see you in person the other day. That was awesome. The Oi Gamer. You uh, you a soccer fan? All right, let's uh, get my mic here, but not in the way. Ah, wrestling fan, just as cool. What's up, Justin? Yeah, I did a, um, a live stream on the SNES version last year, and then the Famicom version this year, and it, uh, they were awesome. So I have a PAL Mega Drive that someone was nice enough to gift me a long time ago. Motherboard only. So I could not think of a better way to try this out because this doesn't have a doesn't have a home to live in anyway. So perfect. Hey what's up the Pask? So for anybody that was kind enough to jump on right now, what would you prefer? The smoke clear or the clear clear? I figured I would set it in both. I think this one's going to live in the, the fully clear one, but, you know, we'll find that out after. Oh, we are, like, straight down the middle. Okay, I'm going to start with the smoke clear because I think this is going to end up living in the, the fully clear one. Uh, but wow, this is cool. See, this is this is why I'm so glad Retro Game Restore makes both. Because every time I ask, there's equal amount of people that love them both. So, you know, why not why not try? So let's see. Now I do know that I was told that this these are um, near final prototypes, which means that you know it's going to be really close to what you would expect but there might be some changes or some final changes and also starting out with this one i'm not taking it out of another shell so there might be parts missing uh, but i'll do another one um i you know no rush here so there is some smudging on this let me um sorry let me uh let me go and grab like a paper towel or something too um horrible robot i'm not sure we'll find out <laughs> um, all right, one second. Let me just grab some some cleaning stuff. I'm uh, I'm not really sure what to use, but I'm part Greek, so I think I kind of have to use Windex. So uh, we'll start with that. Um, I believe there's different stickers th so that you could put on uh, different logos and stuff like that, which I am the worst at. So uh, let's if I have to do that, you all get to watch me screw it up royally. And once again, if anybody in the chat. Um, happens to to see something and I miss it. Please remind everybody that these are near production prototypes. So like 99% there. So things like smudging, you're probably not going to have to worry about this. Uh, this has probably already been assembled and disassembled a bunch of times, which is why I'm I'm needing to do that. So just want to make sure that's clear. Credit where credits due, you know. Yeah, so there is some, like, crud on here, but I guarantee you that's because these came out of the molds for, for final um, final approval. So I could try cleaning it more later, but uh, anybody that's watched my other streams with the production versions of the SNES shells knows that this, this is not anything that you would ever expect on a production version. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, there are not Model 2 cases available yet. Um, Nurtak, you really got to make that decision yourself. Uh, the, the question is playfully, playfully posted. Will this be, will these be expensive, but not a ripoff pricing? 
Um, they are going to be expensive, but they're expensive because that's how much they cost to make when you make them this quality. So check the links in the description. Um, you'll be able to see exactly how much they cost from either Castlemania or directly from Retro Gamer Store. So that's, um, that's really going to be up to you to decide. Just put it in a retro bright vapor chamber. That's funny. Uh, I don't have a Sega CD with me, but I can put the case next to the original just to just to double check that it, it'll fit. But I can't imagine they wouldn't have checked that. Um, let's see. Are they? Are there? Are there? Is there any divots on the screw posts on the top shell? No. Um, so you could uh, hold on. Let me. Let me see if I can get this into focus. Where this this thumb is, it's probably the easiest to see at the moment. And while you can see the post, there are no divots. Now, of course, if I put a screw in here and tighten it down way too tight, that'll pull the plastic through. But, I mean, with something this, this well built, I think I'd really have to torque it, over torque it down. So, uh, there is no European source to get them, but if you go directly from Retro Gamer Store, they're coming from Taiwan. So, it's at least... Probably, or depending where you live, a shorter distance uh, than than the U.S. Totally up to you, though. Yeah, I watched Tito's video as well. I got to. Um, I want to do some more research on that because I kind of have some. Uh, I kind of have some questions because no one's ever really come back and said that they're. They're actually trained in this stuff, and they have a degree. Actually, the only one person who claims that they were a chemical engineer was the person who told everybody, put your shells in direct sunlight for a full day or two, which has got to be the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my life. And you don't, have, you don't need an engineering degree or a chemical degree to realize you're going to destroy your plastics doing that. But, you know. All right. So, once again, this is just... This is a uh, PAL motherboard that never really had a, a shell. So let's just start plugging it in and see how it fits. So far, getting the controller ports in is equally as annoying as the original. <laughs> um, okay, so there is a divot here that's going to prevent that from going through. So they include new heat sinks. Not sure about this though. Maybe there's a different way to get it in. Let me try the other ones as well. Uh, I I don't think Retro Game Restore has DSI shells, but I could swear I remember seeing them somewhere else. But I honestly don't remember where that would have been. So let's see on the clear as well. Same thing. So these are pre-production finishes. And uh, normally I wouldn't be comfortable showing these on camera because I don't want people thinking this is what you're going to get. But I have two, three, four other live streams showing the other Retro Game uh, uh, Restore shells. So you know this isn't what you're going to get. Um, so yeah, once again, if you're in the chat and you see people commenting about it before I can grab it, just politely let them know this is not what to expect. But that does still have a thing there that blocks... There was a metal plate on the bottom from the main board. This is missing. So those plates are RF shielding to comply with the laws of the time. Uh, so this is not, in most cases, it's not something that's going to increase or lower performance of your console. It is simply to prevent interference with other things. But since we're long past that era, I really wouldn't worry about it anymore at all. All right, so... I am going to, how are we going to do this? All right. I think I'm going to cut it <clears throat> because if you look here, we have the screw holes to keep these down and this is just in the way. So 
I believe this should be cut. I, well, I believe whenever you make an extra or a, an aftermarket plastic design like this, the purpose is to accommodate all motherboard revisions. So maybe there's something that goes here on other models that um, that requires it. But I think we could just snip that off. Oh, hey, Martin. Thanks for joining. Um, so have you done thermal tests on the newer heat sinks? And if you did, um, so would these, these mounting screws go here then? They don't, because these mounting screws seem to line up with the heat sink. Not, not with the uh, motherboard screws. So what what is this standoff here for then? And thanks for joining, by the way, Martin. I know it's really late there. I didn't even expect to be doing this, but um, what is this for and why do we need it? Because it doesn't seem to serve a purpose other than maybe strengthening a little bit. But Because that might be for the Model 7, the VA7s that have a different power supply thing there. Because this is for a PAL one that has it built right in. This is a VA4 PAL motherboard. And it comes with a whole bunch of other good stuff as well. The hook in the bottom right is to secure the top shell. Okay. Oh, it does clip on there. Okay. Well, no problem. I will swap these out and we'll see what we get. Um, but since I've done this quite a few times before, I can tell you right now that there's going to be some goopy thermal paste on here so let me grab that first and clean it off but now of course my screwdrivers all the way over here oh, excuse my giant head there we go you know this thing finally sort of died after years one of my friends told me, like, oh, don't buy those. You know, they die every six months. I think this is almost 10 years old. And new batteries. So, that I think that's the one that's still on my eBay store. So, very obviously worth the money. 20 bucks, 10 years of use. <laughs> Got some enter loops to go with it. So, I guess I'll just go old school. I, uh, I still haven't had time because of the part shortage, actually, to do testing on the newer voltage regulators that are very expensive. They're like 10 bucks each, but supposedly they don't require a heat sink and there's no chance, supposedly, of diagonal interference like there is with the other replacement 7805s. So I've been really wanting to go and give those a chance at some point uh, because that would just eliminate so many different issues and you never, you know... Heat is always a problem inside everything electronic, so I shouldn't say problem. Heat is always something that if you could have less of with the equal amount of performance, it's always a good thing. So that's certainly one thing I'd like to try at some point. But for now, let's, uh, let's remove this massive heat sink. Uh -huh. 
Shane Lynch has been excited to see this. What's up, Shane? Uh, but didn't have any Model 1s of the broken shell for a donor. Well, trust me, they are all over the place. So you should definitely be able to find it. Um, one thing that I do recommend doing, and maybe this is overkill. I'm totally okay if it is overkill. But I'm going to add thermal paste and also clean both of these up before putting them on. That's something I've always done. It's something that I don't really think... I mean, I don't really think anything bad could happen. It might be a waste of time, but whatever. So let me grab some isopropyl. Uh, yeah, once again, sorry. Should have thought of this before I put the camera here. Hardcore, that's a VA4 PAL, PAL version. And I recently found these things. Probably hard to see because there's uh, the camera's compensating. Yeah, there we go. Um, which I actually bought to clean heads on a cassette player. But I found I like them way more than Q-tips. And they're not much more expensive. Let's dip that right in the uh, IPA. These are like the cleanest heat sinks I've ever seen. They must not have had thermal paste from a factory. Or not much. Which is weird, because they should have. I mean, they're not wet enough here. There we go. Hey, what's up, Hector? The final product will come with thermal pad and heat sink. Um, thanks, Martin. I see you have uh, the volume switch here, but do you also, or will you also be offering reset and power buttons as well? Um, I, I know that people are supposed to take it out of their original, but I was just kind of curious because this one I have is motherboard only. I knew I still had some thermal compound. Hmm. No reset button and power switch this time probably would produce them later. I mean, that's totally fair. That's, uh, I mean, that's not something anybody, I, I would hope nobody expected that because those aren't things that normally need replacing. But, <clears throat> you know, maybe that's just a good opportunity for uh, extra stuff later for upgrades. Let me check here. Will these fit into these? Or do you have your own screws for that? Let's see. Hmm. All right, so I'd have to come in from the opposite. That should be fine. Doing this is easy. Doing this on camera, a little different. <clears throat> Let me try not to make an ass of myself. Um... To be honest, because this is IPA, I probably don't even have to worry about wiping that down. But I just, you know, why not? Let me get that a little more. In... There we go. Oh, we'll get to the stickers later, Flavio. 
Uh, wouldn't a one millimeter thermal pad be better? Possibly, but um, nothing wrong with thermal paste. How do you get the LED light out of the old shell? Um, where is it? It's right here a minute ago. You grab the LED that Martin includes in the <laughs> in the new ones. And I also found old screws from an older Genesis as well in case we need those. Okay, let's just double checking on the chat here. All right. So grab some of this. Well, I wasn't planning on putting that much, but it kind of just shot out, so a little bit of Voltar splooge. Trying to be very gentle with that so it doesn't go shooting everywhere. So probably not necessary, but certainly no harm done. Hector, I usually used Arctic Silver, but I was just digging down in my drawer and uh, can only find this. I don't have the slightest clue where this came from, but that's the one I've been using for a long time. Um, right. Try to get my big ass hands out the way. Sorry, I got to hold it in place for it to... Uh, all right, so tight, but not like strain yourself tight because you don't want to hurt anything. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bend that just slightly away from the caps. Anybody in here who's smarter than me, Shane, I know you're in here. Please, uh, please shout out if you think that's a bad idea. <clears throat> but I think as long as these pins don't touch, which they haven't at all, just you know, pointing the heat sink up and away from capacitors can't be a bad thing. I might be missing something, though, which, you know, it happens. Okay. All right, tight, but not super tight. Same thing with that one. Uh, cryonut thermal grizzly is better i haven't tried that one. Oh, neat um so i just want to get it up in front of my face yeah so those three pins not even remotely close to touching this is a little off-centered which i could just i don't even think that matters but yeah perfect so pins are not touching it's bent a little bit back farther um, oh, Martin just mentioned too that these are, uh, once again, these are pre-production cases. These are very close to, but not what you're going to get when they ship officially. So I guess there's going to be different ones shipped with it. Thanks, Martin. All right, where did I put the bottom? Ah, right here. So let's try this again. And uh, I'm going to go, all, all puns and kidding aside here, I'm going to go slow with this show different angles, swap it back and forth before bolting down, just so people could kind of get an idea of what to expect here. So this is, so with nothing else installed, the cartridge tray, nothing else. Here is this one. Oh man, that looks cool as hell. Let me, uh, Oh, that's nice. That is real nice. Oh, I like it. So the other thing I was mentioning before, while I swapped this over so you could see the clear one, um, those metal shielding, in many cases that you see on the top and bottom, 
you'll see them in US and, and I think European consoles, but not Japanese. And that's because they had different FCC standards for interference. And in most cases, those metal shielding didn't really matter. Um, PC Engine Turbo Graphics they do, because that's actually the ground plane. Um, and for, for consoles that are known for really bad jail bars, I would say, it, you know, that's one of the cases where the 0.01% difference might, <laughs> might matter. But for these, I would strongly recommend getting rid of those metal shieldings and just allowing you to see inside the really awesome case. Um, totally up to you. I would keep them because basically if you put it all back together and you have some interference on your screen or buzzing in the audio or something, take it apart, put the metal shield back and see if it goes away and if it does you need it if it doesn't you don't but there's no safety issue other than that um but, and the only other issue is interfering with other things that are powered on which you know you would have to have all of your consoles powered on at the same time for this to be a problem oh man this one looks awesome too i can't tell which one i like better uh t um I was I, I keep reminding people, so I apologize if you've been in the chat for a while. These are near production pre-production units. So you see like the film on them. Um, I, I started cleaning them before. These are not what you would get. And if you want proof, just check out the SNES and the Super Famicom streams that I did with this just to show you that this is not what you're gonna have to worry about. Um, so I think I'm gonna leave this one in the clear. And I think I'm going to do uh, I'll show a different motherboard in the other one. So let's see how much we could do with here. And just reminding everybody as well, I just had a motherboard laying around. So we're going to be missing pieces, which I'll, I'll figure out at another time. But so let's see what else we have here. Yeah, Michael, you could also use a um, Game Genie or something like that. Oh, look at that. I want to I got to put the shell back on just to show you that. Wait, nope. <laughs> oh, that looks so cool. How amazing would a Mega CD and 32X clear shell be with this? I I would be terrified to see a 32x shell with this because there's just there are so many bodge wires and awfulness in 32x's i almost want to pretend like that never happened <laughs> um all right if you go without the shield would it affect using the 32x almost likely no but leave the 32x shielding on just in case I would recommend that anyway. By the way, I always keep these little... I always keep all my plastic bags. We have, we have a plastic bag ban up in the Northeast now. And no, it's not for drugs. <laughs> There's so many times that I go to, like, put stuff... Like, these screws were from an older Genesis. I think it's at Cruz's house now. Uh, but, like, I always keep those smaller baggies for stuff. So that always comes in handy. So the longest screws hold the cartridge port down. Wait, do I need this for anything? Martin, if you're still here, what do I need this for? Totally forgot. Hmm. And also, I'm looking for the back plates. Are those in here or are those not shipped yet? Um, that was another thing that Martin did that I thought was such a cool idea. Because I, was, I wasn't trying to talk shit, but I was also really curious how uh, Martin was going to pull off the whole rear I.O. board because there's so many different types. How is he going to deal with that? And he just created an insert for it. And I don't think the inserts are here. I think they're probably en route, but I think that's a brilliant idea because that way you could spend the money on high quality, one mold, one top mold, one bottom mold, and then just have a different insert. So I think that is really good. Uh, 
Actually, it's a good question, Hector. I don't think there's a chance of these yellowing in the same way that the other ones would. Uh, because that was, if you'll notice, like Super Nintendo, some of them are yellow and some of them aren't. And it's the type of plastic that was used. So as long as, you know, it's also why you don't see more modern things yellow as well. Because they figured out how to not let that happen. Um, so also, I believe Martin just said this was for the power button, which I don't have one yet. So I will uh, I will figure that out second when we do the, the swap out. This was just going to give a home for a PAL motherboard here. Do you think I have the insert? All right. So I have the bottom tray. I have these. You know, one of the... It is possible it's right in front of me. When I did that stream with Greg a year and a half ago and I said I lost a part, it turned out to be, like, right to the right above my head. <laughs> All right, let me see what we got here. Here's the one that's inside the other one, a 16-bit sticker, and are they in here? Oh, shit. They're in the other one. Thanks, Martin. Appreciate it. So. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, Shane, that's the problem with clear parts. They're clear. Sometimes you can't see them. <laughs> some, uh, some ASMR sticker peeling right here. Damn guitar player fingers. I have no, absolutely no nails. I was uh, assembling a, a case from Retro Gamer Store yesterday, or not Retro Gamer, um, for Retro Castle, sorry, yesterday, and it took longer for me to get these stickers off than it did for me to assemble the rest of the case, because it's got no nails. No idea if that came out on, uh, on audio, but there you go. So since that is here, I think we just twist. Oh, shit. Sorry, Martin. Damn it. Um, well, since this was a prototype, don't twist. Cut. I kind of love failing in these live streams because it shows other people what not to do. Ooh, actually, no, that one's hard too. All right, Martin. How do I uh, how do I do this without breaking it? All right, I apologize for breaking the thing that you sent. Because even when I went to cut it there, hmm, oh boy. Well, maybe I'll cut this one with, no, because that's, that's the one that fits this one. Well, yeah, shit. Well, I know my other one absolutely has both of these so let's just do this on camera here no nope, that broke that broke this piece right off so i think if you still have time to change the mold martin you're going to need to make these way thinner on the sides let me grab that now before i step on that later because while it would be funny on stream not really Yeah, I'm totally stabbing myself on that. Uh, St uh, Stefan, that's because it's a PAL one? Matt, I did not do arts and crafts. I was a big meathead. I uh, rode my bike, played football, played guitar. Yeah, no, I mean, it's no problem, Martin. That's why, that's why we send each other this stuff. Because <laughs> we want to make sure that, you know, this, uh, this gets finished up before production so that's fine besides i never mind making an ass of myself on camera so if there was anybody that wouldn't mind breaking this live it's me so yeah exacto knife but even though i mean i you all saw me here i just put the slightest bit of pressure on these cutters and 
the end piece snapped. So I don't know if an X-Acto knife would do any different. You know, I got one. Let me see. Uh, if I were an X-Acto knife, where would I be? Uh, try. Good enough. I don't need that much. Yeah, that's going to be tricky. Try it this way. All right, that did seem to work, but it still made me a little nervous because the thing was flexing, so... Okay. Uh, Stefan, this is a VA4. So that's that could be why that is, but just a different board revision. Yeah, so Martin made a point. You don't need to cut anything unless you have this here, but I think a ton of the US ones have that port there. So that's definitely going to be something most of us would use. Hey, retired Night Owl, what's up? Where do you get an exacto saw? You know, a buddy of mine's a contractor, and he came up with this tool the other day that's like a vibrating sideways saw thing. I, got, I wrote down what it was. I was so impressed. I'd never seen one like that before. And he said it's a kind of a relatively new thing that's taking the place of a lot of other tools, um, specifically because it, uh, you know, it's something like that. It's almost like you take a knife, and it can kind of, goes like that for you but it's pretty neat okay screwing this down okay good everything so far so good um as you can see here i didn't save all my screws I gotta remind Jose that I have these because he's got a genesis of mine over there that at some point he's gonna be like, why is there only three screws in this? What the hell happened to the rest? <laughs> Sorry, Cruz. So... The most important part to put screws in, you should save all of yours, obviously, but the cartridge port, because that's when you're having a lot to pull up and down. The rear ports, because you want to make sure that the motherboard is staying in place and uh, holding that in. And then, of course, around the controller ports, which mm, I probably should have put that one here, but, you know, I'm going to find other screws soon enough, so. Okay. So far, so good with that. Now, so we know I don't have a power switch and a reset switch. I'll have to get some of those. I actually need a few things. I need I need one of these two for a different uh, model Genesis. So if anybody has parts for sale who's in the chat, please shout out. I'll buy them off you. All right, so now we're going to go to the top shell. Let me just measure this out for a second. I mean, that is certainly looking awesome, but okay. So how do we install these now? Is there another piece that I'm not seeing that's right in front of me? That does tend to happen. The door flip. I need the frame from the original. Okay, so I really do need a broken, beat-up parts genesis to finish this one. Um... 
So maybe I think it's best that I just kind of put this together as is, uh, show it off, and then I'll go back and install the rest of it when I find the rest of the parts. And if anybody in the chat has a broken one, please let me know. So. Um. See, always save your bags. Put this in. These. And pop screws, I'll just keep on here as well. So what I will do, which I normally can't stand doing because I'm terrible at it, I'll get this together and I will put one of the stickers on so you can see it. But uh, let's kind of check it out as is, and then I'll, I'll grab my other Genesis to do a real installation. This was a good warm-up, though. I have a feeling this back piece would line up, line up a little bit better if I didn't break it in half. Oh, that does look really cool, though. You could almost not even see where I, where I snapped it. Oh, wow, that does look awesome. I love how it's extra clear in back. That is just such a neat thing. Hey, the real Phoenix, how's it going? Muramasa's here too. No, I need the springs from the original, and all I had was an extra motherboard laying around, which kind of makes this one of the perfect, you know, first runs just to try this out. Wow, that really does look absolutely awesome. Matt, anybody here still going online with the Genesis in 2022? If we could, we would. So somebody was asking about the Sega CD. This is tapered exactly like the original, and it has the door for the expansion. So while I don't have a Sega CD here, I can't imagine a scenario in which this wouldn't fit. That looks really cool, though. I'm going to, um, since we're here, I'm going to screw down at least two of the screws just to keep the, the cover on and kind of go from there. Um, Martin... Do you recommend people put the stickers on the outside, not the inside, correct? By the way, also, I love the fact that Martin's throwing in these brand new screws. It just, I can't tell you how many older consoles I've worked on since I started retro RGB that I'll get the console and there'll be like one screw holding the whole top cover on because people have been in it over the years, lost the screws and then just never remember to pick it up. Uh, Chow, yes, I normally do, except um, this is a pre-production unit that's already a little bit scuffed and this is a very soft piece of wood. You're normally right though. Normally I did have a piece of wood on, or a piece of towel or something underneath holding it in place. Uh, but I'm being a little less gentle than I normally would be. But I actually think I'm going to put all the screws in because I want, I want, even though it's missing pieces, I want to be able to just kind of grab this and show off anytime anybody's asking about it in this stream. So does anybody know, I, I could cheat and look it up, of course, but which of these 16-bit stickers I should use for the PAL version? Or is it the same as the, uh, the Japanese So since also, since the plastic is brand new, it is a little bit of a struggle to get the screw in, but the fact that Martin's given brand new screws makes that much, much easier. It's not like uh, when I was doing the SNES one and broke the heads off of the ancient torque screw that were in there. It's still really embarrassing. I broke that back piece off. Should do that screw next to make sure it stays in place. 
Hal is small, only Japan is big. Thank you, The Real Phoenix. Much appreciated. Is there no screw over here? One, two, three, four, five. Am I just... It's the other downside of a clear shell. I can't quite see. <laughs> I can't quite see where it's supposed to go. The, um... I think a post might be missing from this. I'm not sure if that's broken off or not. Interesting. So, yeah, it looks like there was a post right here where my pinky finger is, but it broke off. Once again, I get to keep repeating myself. These are pre-production units. So don't expect that when you're going to get these home, that you're going to have broken standoffs and, you know, I don't want to say dirty, but scuffed plastic. Martin was nice enough to send me these to get our feedback on it and and see what's up with them. Why am I having so much trouble? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, so that's what that little uh, thing is on the other side. This clips that in, so with the other one screwed down. Yeah, so don't break your, uh, don't break your rear piece and you won't have this issue. So five screws and that one did break off. So, okay, well, since this is kind of a practice one anyway, let's put the stickers on and see how bad I do. A lovely guide right here. Tribal Science, if you're in the U.S. and you have a broken case, I will buy it off you because, as you can see here, I need some parts for mine. Well, that was one smooth as fuck idea right there. Did you all see that? The sticker was two-sided. Um, so it allowed you to put this down, and then you pull the second sticker off, and that's how the 16-bit stays aligned. I did it a little crooked because I think I'm a little crooked, but that is a very neat design. I just kind of put this guide over it. I should have... Yeah... I should have taken another moment with that, but since this case is prototypes anyway, and uh, I'm much less worried about it. Well, I don't know about you all, but I think this is amazing. Any other angles you want me to see now before I um, before I switch over? Yeah, Matt, absolutely, please. As you can see here, I need um, I need the door flap. I need the buttons. I need an extra reset button because the one that you're going to see that I'm about to uh, check out has a reset button that stopped working. I need another phone, but uh, headphone jack. So yes, I, it's broken ones. Definitely broken ones. I don't want to ruin a real one. But I'm going to just kind of show this off for another moment. And then I'm going to go get my actual Genesis. And now that I know what to expect, I'm going to make less mistakes. Or, you know... Now you get twice the opportunity to laugh at me if I keep making mistakes. <laughs> Man, this thing's beautiful. Phil, you're like the second person that mentioned that. <laughs> no, uh, it's the reason plastic yellows is because of the chemicals that were used inside the plastic, which is why you'll see certain model SNESs get yellow and others not. Most modern stuff should not yellow anymore. 
this is cool. All right, I'm going to grab my other Genesis. Any other questions, queue them up, and I'll grab them. Uh, and Matt, message me on Twitter, and if I don't get right back to you, I'll, we'll figure something out here during this chat. All right, the good old high definition graphics Sega Genesis. It's my probably my favorite looking console of all time. Bromine and ABS plastic back in the seventies to nineties was used as a fire retardant. Oh, that's right. Good call, Real Phoenix. We um the reason i speak confidently about that is not because i'm an arrogant youtuber even though i guess i kind of am a little bit it's because i work for a company where we designed and built medical grade computers and we did all of it from the motherboard design assisted uh, by msi computer was the last company that we worked with but everything including plastics and that was one of the questions that i asked you know this is back in 2006 but i was legit sitting in, a, uh, in an office in taiwan and said Will this end up looking like my Super Nintendo in five years, or will it not yellow? And that's when they, they explained all that stuff to me, patiently. Okay. So, the old trick... See if I can do it without breaking it. Hey, Felipe. Thanks very much for stopping by. There you go. And uh, red faces the um, all of the ports. White faces the Sega CD for when you go to put it back on. But that's it. Uh, Sega didn't even put a connector on it. They literally just jammed two of the LED leads through. <laughs> kind of funny, right? Um, so... Let's continue to take this one apart. This one is a VA3 that was used for MD Fourier testing. Actually, everything you see was used for MD Fourier testing, but this one was one of the, the main units we kept going back to. And this was one of the units that proved via the help of Firebrand X that um, replacing capacitors doesn't really change the audio, of course, unless the caps are dead and, you know, and, and leaking or something like that. But older caps, and brand new ones don't really make a difference in the audio output on a Sega Genesis. Now, of course, I'm sure if you're talking about digital to analog converters, high-end audio, you know, that's a different story, obviously. But When in doubt, grab some tweezers. And if you'll notice, all of these are about the same size. I'll point out the larger ones, because I used to always lay them out. I kind of still do just by um, force of habit, but I used to always lay them out in the exact order until I realized they always kind of follow a pattern. Okay. Swapping electrolytic with ceramic caps sometimes makes a difference, other times makes no difference. So uh, that's um, that's something to, to check out. Matt, let me let me check on that right now, just in case. I don't want to miss this. Yeah, I'm not seeing you. Um, if you're comfortable putting your Twitter name in here and then just deleting it right afterwards, I'll just uh, I'll look you up.
Let's see secondary power. Get that out of here. Now we go to the motherboard ones. Once again, same size as what you're seeing here. Retro World was awesome. I lost my voice completely, and I got a bit of uh, what Mark calls the con crud, but uh, we all tested. None of us got COVID. We just got a cold, the ones of us that did. So, longer screw around the heatsink. And of course, double checking in the ones by the cartridge slot. And the ones by the cartridge slot are the same size as the ones by the heatsink. So you really, as far as the black screws for the inside of the console goes, there's the three on the outside and the two here that are longer. The one metal one that goes directly into the top heatsink and then the rest are the same size. Yeah, Matt, but I have my Twitter locked down because of all the, the trolls and assholes, so I didn't even see your thing pop up at all. Um, yeah, I'm not even seeing it. I'm sorry. Okay. Did I forget a screw, or is it going to come right out? Remember, too, when you're pulling these out, the controller ports are always kind of jammed in there. Um, and so is the bottom metal. So you you probably should bend this piece out. Just be careful because you don't want to mess anything up. But it is light metal. So No, it's, it's not you, Matt. It's me. I just, uh, I just got tired of the bullshit, so I locked it all down. Which means I miss a lot of good people, but, you know... Kind of what you're going to do these days. Okay. So I think the other things I'm going to need are the reset button, which is easy. That just pops right out. Perfect. Uh, and then this... Martin, am I going to have to break this? Where am I? Would I have to break these tabs to get it out? And then, of course, I would have to unscrew this in order to get the, the flaps out as well. Um, it's, that's totally okay, because <clears throat> I could just use an X-Acto knife, and if I ever needed to put it back in, I'd be willing to bet that epoxy would work equally as good as what's there now. Let me see if I can do this on camera without cutting myself. So the end kind of flips up pretty easy, you just have to wiggle... Doing it is easy. Doing it on camera, very hard. We're trying to just go slow. Slide around to this one. Is that already out? Yep, okay, okay. So let me get the other two. Okay. This, I'm going to do this last one off uh, off camera. I just don't want to cut myself. All right. That was super easy to do, really hard to do on camera. Let me, uh...
Okay. And once again, this, if I just decided that I, I wanted my old shell back, or maybe I'll break another piece <laughs> while I'm putting this one in, all I would have to do is add a couple of dabs of super glue right there or epoxy or something. So I'm still considering this a no cut mod. And then, of course, taking these last pieces off. It's an easy repair as long as Bob doesn't botch it. That is fair. <laughs> Monty. This isn't a Voltar stream. Okay. So, we have this stripped. So let's start looking into this one. Now, this is the same issue as before, and I know Martin told me that I should be replacing this heat sink with the ones that, uh, that will come with it, but I put a lot of work into this one, and I kind of want it exactly as is. So I want to see what happens if I cut this. And I'm going to assume that I'm about to screw up this entire thing, but once again, it's a pre-production unit so that I paid for it because <laughs> uh, I wanted this early. Um, so let's just see what happens. If I totally screw it up, then I'm the idiot that just did that on stream. And if not, then maybe we have a slightly different method that we could use if anybody insists on keeping their original heatsink. See what happens. Hey, what's up, show? So that went right in, except I just got to wiggle to get these cartridge ports in at the same time. Might be a little challenging, but... The only challenging part is you're supposed to put the motherboard in at this angle. And uh, you can't do that if you have the heatsink here. So I kind of going to have to... Luckily, it's plastic and not metal, so there's a little bit of a give. I don't want to snap the plastic, obviously, or break a trace on the motherboard. But I'm almost there. I'm just like a millimeter away from popping directly into place. Try going in a different way. By the way, what I'm going through right now is not uh, is not only on the Retro Gamer Store case. This is all original Genesis consoles are kind of a pain in the ass for this, uh, for this exact reason. You have to wiggle them around in order to get it to sit in place properly. Hmm. Okay. I'm determined to do this. Mm -hmm. By the way, any uh, any thoughts on me doing a live stream opening the new guitar that's supposed to arrive for tomorrow or Friday? Um, I'd really like to do that, but it would really bum me out if all of the comments were, this isn't retro game related, what's wrong with you, idiot? Unless you're kidding, and then it would make me laugh, of course, but... Hmm. Okay, I'm interested to see how all of this is going to go, because there's the power cord here for it, too. Interesting. All right. Well, let me continue wiggling on this and see if uh, once I get it to fall right into place, we could get the rest of it in. Let me just. Oh, I think that was it. I think we're in. I just needed to apply a little bit of diagonal pressure, but I think that's it. I think we're completely in. Okay. Well, that's cool. So let's start bolting it up and see what happens. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, the only thing, the only thing that I'm going to tease is it's a solar guitar that I have been staring at for years. And every time they come in stock, I would put it in my cart and I'd stare at it. And I'd look over at my Dave Mustaine guitar that I had customized and I go, but I don't even play this anymore. Why would I play that? And then eventually it goes out of stock and then it goes back in stock again and I repeat the process. So what I would, I was hoping that maybe this time if I just bought it, maybe this is either, if I love the guitar, I, who knows, maybe this will be the catalyst I need to start playing again. And if I don't, maybe it's just time to quit because you can't really play the music I play casually. With all respect to uh, people who sing Kumbaya around a fire, you, c you could do that every five years and not practice. You can't exactly go into Dyer's Eve or Stream of Consciousness or um, any of the crazy music I play if you don't practice all the time. So. Okay, so longer screws and four spots here. There's no uh, post for this one, but you don't need the post. Wait, is this a post here? No, but you wouldn't need it anyway because um, there's more than enough. I mean, there's already two solid things here, so that, that was just a bit of overkill. You also don't need this screw because that held the metal plate on top of it. I'm actually going to put this just into the heat sink so I don't lose it. And let's start going around. This is where the metal shielding would go, but we don't need it anymore. If, you know what, Matt? I don't know how to play Freebird. I know that's like weird and blasphemous, but that was one of the many songs I just... Cool to listen to. Don't really care about playing. I think I, I don't even think I know how to play um, Stairway to Heaven. I used to just because it's one of those things that, you know, you have to, but I like Led Zeppelin, but my favorite stuff to play by far, In Flames, Megadeth, anything where the rhythm guitar is like one, one big weird guitar solo. Nita Strauss just released a new album, and she the the title song that she, or the song that she just released yesterday is like that. She's got a lot of awesome guitar playing on it. She's phenomenal, but her the rhythm section in it is like something I would write. It's just awesome. <laughs> I thought Terminator was all you needed to uh, for motivation to play. That was so much fun doing that with Kendall and Ronnie was was absolutely amazing. And when uh, Yehel from Wrestling with Gaming. Did the final uh, editing to that? That just that made me smile a lot. All right, so all of the screws are used except the one extra long screw. I'm sure if I wanted to, I could probably just use an extra one of the extra things that we have here. But the point of the screws is to keep the motherboard from flexing, and we're in, so that's not a problem. Now, what's interesting, though, there's my, uh, my beat-up. Okay. So, this all lines up. But I'm curious how this stays in place, because there's no mount for that. That's interesting. I wonder if there's one on the top shell. Hmm. The only other thing we have to do is cut this without uh, snapping the thing in half again. So we'll see if I could. Let me try it this way and try not to cut myself on stream. It would be funny, but I've had enough injuries this week. Yeah, that's not. So. Ooh, 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 ooh. <clears throat> yeah, this is the hardest part by far so far. 
Tea Glory. I have not seen John Petrucci play play the Super Mario theme song with Mario a Mario pick. That's funny though. Okay, not bad. All right, interesting. So let's put this aside a second and work on the top. Um, LEDs would be fairly soon. Just pushing in the reset button. Did I do it backwards? I think I did do it backwards. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not really into that. But uh, we will do an LED in this one, that's for sure, because the original had it. All right, I had it right the first time. I was just trying to be gentle. Um,. And then power switch, we could bolt in now for this, which I couldn't figure out last time. So, that would just bolt in. And of course, you would have the option of just keeping the original black flaps. But, let's, let's go the distance and install the ones that came with this. and these are also cut uh to be region free so you don't have to worry about them fitting or not fitting so i've actually never taken one of these apart uh, out of all the genesis consoles i've ever i've ever disassembled i've never gotten to this i think i probably should have when i was doing the cleaning but they always came out fine All right. Same with this. Okay. So you just obviously would want to put that flap up on the inside. I gotta use my, my gut here to keep that balanced. Sorry. Yep, so and then same with over here. Always cracks me up how much harder it is to do something when you're trying to keep it in view on camera. Even Voltar jokes with me about that all the time. He's got to do like a couple of takes of something on some of his videos for a procedure that he does three times a day, blindfolded, half asleep. Got it. All right, let's bolt this sucker in. <clears throat> Matt, I'm sorry, I didn't, um, but there's a, just don't put the at sign on. There's a lot of auto things that, uh, that YouTube throws in there that I have no control over. Um, like links is an obvious one, right? Cause you don't just want somebody spamming you with, you know, porn links or whatever else. But I think the at sign might be one of them. Um, Demo Kirby, if someone calls you Retro RGB, you should just reply, sorry, my name is Bob the Artist, formerly known as Retro RGB. Um, that's funny.
Got it, Matt. All right, cool. Yeah, I had uh, somebody I knew my whole life as one name. And then one day they're just like, like, um, I'm trying to use a good example without using their name. Like, if I call them Steve their whole life, and then all of a sudden they're like, actually, call me Steven. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You're not, you're not transitioning. You're not becoming a different person. You just decided that you like your longer name better from calling you Steve for 30 years for Steve. If you don't like it, call me anything you want. Okay, so that's in and that's in. Now we have to do the power button, which is here. Hey, super chat from Johnny the Whiz Kid. Thank you so much. These super chats are what keep any of this stuff going, <clears throat> as well as support of any kind. So thank you. That's much appreciated. Question. They're looking to hire somebody to RGB mod a CRT TV for them. It's a 1985 KV2790R. Uh, can I do that or know, know someone who could neckboard mod this? Um, I don't do mods for hire. Um mostly because i don't have time but also because there's just so much better people out there um however that's something you should look up on <coughs> Ooh, excuse me local facebook groups uh local um hold on a second sorry Ugh. whenever i come back from expos i always have a cold or something from talking all day and meeting so many people um but that's that's a great thing for something local to you. Like, um, any of the, that way you could drive it down. You don't have to worry about shipping. There's also things that you could do where um, ending 15, we're getting there in one second. But there's also things that you could do that are like, um, if and only if you're comfortable discharging the tube yourself, which you could die. So please don't just do it on a whim. You could do something like discharge it uh, take pictures of where all the wires go, unbolt it all, and just send your board out to somebody to be RGB modded right through the jungle chip, and possibly even recapped. Now, of course, you'd still have to do some kind of calibration yourself, but, um, that is also a possibility. I uh, I did a full recap on my JVC D-Series 32-inch. I did it with Jose. Um, he was there to help in case I screwed everything up, and um, it came out excellent. Um, it, there was one or two times, though, where I was doing it, and I went, uh-oh, Cruz, I think I messed something up. And he was right there next to me, and I did mess something up, but because he was right there, it was like a one-second fix. And if he wasn't there... I think we would have been in some trouble. So that's the only other thing I want to remind everybody is, you know, don't forget this stuff's hard to do. And if you make a mistake, you might end up paying somebody more than you would have uh, just to do it. Okay. So Martin, if you're still in the chat, here is a problem. Uh, let me just slap this together. Well, maybe it's a problem for me and not a problem for everybody else. Because how do you get the power in on this one? I don't see a mounting peg for it, and there isn't any kind of PCB in here, unless I missed it, like I did the last one, because this is looking pretty beautiful so far, except for that. Let's get the switch here. Somebody was asking about the volume. You don't actually need to touch the volume. Check this out. Just kind of line it up, snap it in. Now you have the clear volume knob, too. Reset button's a little sticky, but nothing's bolted in yet. Maybe I missed the uh, spring or something, too. Ah, Martin said the one they sent is missing the power plug post. Okay. So once again, if anybody's just joining, this is a pre-production unit that I'm here just to kind of show off how it's going to look. 
I got to say, I left the heat sink on in this one just to be able to kind of keep this one exactly as is because it's a unit that we use for MD Fourier testing. But let me grab the other one and show you the difference. This is embarrassing. I don't know where I put the other one. Is it like right on camera in front of me? That's ridiculous. How could I have lost it? Maybe I'm still loopier than I thought from the uh, from the expo. All right, I'm not that crazy. It was behind something else. Um, so look at this. So when I used the heat sink that Martin included, look at how beautiful that is. You can see directly in. You can even see the heat sinks. And now look at this one. You just see the ugly piece of metal. So I absolutely, absolutely suggest using the heat sinks that come with it. I'll do some thermal testing when I have some time. Uh, but, you know, I'm putting this one back in its other case anyway. So I'm glad I didn't do that. So this is pretty awesome, though. Top case looks good. Uh, rear port looks beautiful like this um it's in it's in there it's just clear the only thing is the post to mount that isn't there yeah anthony one is smoke clear and the other is clear clear so i guess um something just fell out in there oh it was a piece of plastic from uh probably from the other top part. So let me just make a little room. And I'm going to put them side by side so you all can see them next to each other. Just need a moment to clean this up so I can get there. Johnny the Whiz Kid, I most certainly did get your super chat, and I thanked you, and I answered your question. So if that's not coming through, please let me know. Uh, maybe my stream glitched or something. I'm happy to answer it again if you need to. And thank you for the super chat. Let me toss this stuff. Be right back. Okay, let me get this out of the way. Oh, I did. I just want to. Uh, I just want to show them side by side first, just to kind of give everybody an idea. Trying to hold them up like Vanna, who's still alive. I have no idea how. I think she's at my grandma's age. Oh, I'll get you back in a second, Johnny. Um, I don't know which one I like better. This is really hard. I think I might like the clear one a little bit better, maybe? I don't know. These just both look so good. Hey, what's up, T? T, you missed me break a bunch of shit before. You'd have had a, you'd have had a great time laughing at me. Man, they both look so good. Let me, uh... Flip them over on this side. Hey, Tonal Assassin. Awesome. Uh, also, just another reminder. I'm so sorry if you've been here since the beginning. These are pre-production cases that are near production quality, but if you see scuffs and smudges, yours will not look like that. Uh, I just asked Martin to send these to me so that we could do exactly this. Go over them live on stream. See if there's any suggestions or 
or anything we find. Um, and that way, before they ship out to customers, if there's any tweaks remaining, we could kind of get them. But so far, so good. Uh, just the back plate should be pre-cut a little bit thinner, which should be fairly easier. Uh, and getting a power, uh, power, I don't know what you would call that, a standoff to mount the power board. That's about it. Yeah, I like the clear so I can see all the factory bodges. Exactly, T. Because you never know what you're going to get with these <laughs> these Genesis consoles. Um, okay, so. Let it, let's try the LED now. And by the way, um, so just once again, I do like taking this off and just seeing all the components underneath. I believe Firebrand X replaced the caps on this one, so those look really good. But I, I do... So if you need to leave this on for whatever reason, you know, if you have a, a model that's hotter than the others or something, just cutting in there absolutely worked. It was a little bit more of a pain to get the motherboard in, but who cares, right? You just do it once. So this this idea worked, which is funny because the thing I cut that didn't work, <laughs> the, you know, the one thing I thought that was going to destroy it actually, you know, worked for real. Um, but I, if possible, I would suggest taking it off because it does look a lot better. And the only thing we're missing here is the standoff that Martin had to send in order to um, to keep this mounted properly. So let's try the LED light now. And then I'm going to put this back in the black shell and just take questions just because uh, I think it'd be fun. Uh, I, yeah, I could do the 16-bit lettering, although I was kind of hoping to, to hold on to this one and put the different lettering on afterwards, but... If you all want to laugh at how bad I am at doing that, then by all means, I'll gladly do it. So, I think we put the LED into this plastic piece first. That seemed to work. And then... Or maybe we put this in first. Uh, T, um, I don't know if I started to answer this or, or just, uh, or forgot to, but the volume, volume slider comes with the case. The power switch and reset button do not. Martin said he would think about maybe adding those as an, uh, an accessory after the fact, but I think so far this is perfect. Accessory after the fact. Are we in a fucking bad TV court drama? Jeez, I really am loopy. Tribal science? Absolutely not. Fire away. LED cap must be installed from the top of the shell outside. Thank you, Martin. Would have been would have been kind of funny if you just left me screw around with this the whole time, but I appreciate you jumping in. <laughs> so, Martin, do you put the LED in first or do I put this through first so led into that and both through or just that by itself cap first thank you um will the sega cd model 2 metal plate still attach to the bottom of the shell they don't see the inserts um you might ha have to leave that in but if you're attaching the Sega CD, uh, leaving the metal plate in the bottom isn't a bad thing because I didn't put it here because I want to see the bottom. But if you're going to leave a Sega CD on, then you wouldn't need to see the bottom. So that kind of works itself out. All right, so I push that LED clip in. Now let me push the LED through it. It goes in so easy that I thought it would have fallen out. But as you can see here, it's not going anywhere. Well, that's cool. And then you would just put the LED on um, exactly like exactly like you did on the other one where you would slide it right over the led and then bend that back i don't want to waste that so i'll do it next time
The uh, reset button does feel a little sticky on this. Let me take another look. Is it? Hmm. Um, so tribal science, that's, uh, you're in the right chat here because what you ended up just doing, you did the S video mod. So you get clearer video out of your Genesis. However, what you also do is make, or well, what you did was make the jail bars clearer too. And that depends on which model one that you have, but some of them, if you do an RGB bypass, will make it worse because everything is crystal clear, including the jail bars. What you're probably just uh, describing is Ram noise. Uh, which is something that you have to reduce by doing the cap uh, bypass method, and there's a few other things. So um, getting good video out of a Model 1 is very hard, but worth it, because you get the great audio too. The A3, just like this one. Yep. So I left this completely stocked for all the testing reasons. Well... Before I put this back in the black shell, is there anything anybody wants to see? Oh, yeah, you said you wanted to watch me royally screw up the sticker again. No problem. I'll make a ass of myself in front of everybody again. Never have a problem doing that. Where was it? So we have the guide here. And I will... So my goal is to put the guide, line that up, and try to get the exact same orientation as the Japanese style larger one. Uh, Matt, only the VA7s. So um, while you are 100% correct, I would just be a little careful with your wording because some Model 1s is true, but it's so few Model 1s that I still like the advice of getting a Model 1 is probably going to end up with a, a, a slightly better sound. So... This dual sticker idea was absolutely brilliant. Um, so what you do is you kind of get an idea of this. And... So... Wait. I think Martin wanted me to do it the opposite. I think I screwed up the first time. What a shock. So check this out. I think I figured this out now. Only took me one one screw up to realize this. I think you possibly, maybe, very carefully try to pull this off and then put this on the back of that in order to affix it. Am I right, Martin? Let me get this off very carefully so I don't pull the actual stickers off. <laughs> okay. Once again, I wish I had nails. Ooh, that's a little harder, though, because it doesn't stick very well to the blue part. Whereas doing it the opposite way, it sticks really well to the blue part. Let's see if I could just be... Oh, shit. Mm. Oh, this is going to be hard. Stay down, Dash. Stay down. Okay, getting there, getting there. Okay. 
No, 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 don't screw up the very last letter. Oh, come on. Oh, all right. Did I do this backwards, Martin? Is that what I ended up just doing? All right. Everybody hold their breath. I may have salvaged this. So I think that I, yeah, I think it's, this is harder than last time. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm just destroying this. Well, now we could know what not to do. Yeah, I'm just going to do this manually. This is all messed up. Okay. Forget it. Let me try again. I think Martin already knew that uh, when you send it to me, there's always a good chance that things are going to get screwed up. So let me maybe try it a different way. That was really hard, though. Rub it on the back, but how? Oh, man, these things are on solid, too. It's a good thing this is a pre-production unit, otherwise I'd be mortified right now. See, everybody? Learn from Martin. You're going to send me something that I can possibly break. Send me pre-production stuff so it's less less of an issue if I destroy it on camera like a total moron. <clears throat> okay. Pull off blue, not clear, is what Martin said. So... Alright, so pull off blue. Carefully, slowly. Okay, I'll line it up, but these don't really stick. Thank you, Travel Science. I really appreciate your super chat. Certainly made me feel good right after I haphazardly did a shit job adding the 16-bit label. I should have added a little bit more that way, but yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I was honest from, from the first moment I said I am the worst person to do these things. That should have been off like that. I mean, for a pre-production unit, yeah, close enough. Um, I'd be pretty sad if if this was my final. Hmm. Well, this is also one of these things where if you're an installer, you do two or three of these things. I probably would have gotten it right on the third try. Oh, I just realized something. Maybe, no, it's not. Actually, you know what, Martin? Um, you know what might be a good idea, if possible, have the have the blue sticker be this tall so what people could do is put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here so that everything is perfectly aligned and you can see right through it 
and then you could kind of just it's already stuck with tape so you could kind of go like that i think that would solve it i just think having like actually exactly like this let me try my theory since i already ruined this one and since i have the extra one oh jacob your ocd is going crazy how do you think i feel right now i got 100 people watching me act like an asshole with a sticker <laughs> all right Oh, that poor 16-bit went to waste. If I have a pile of 16 bits, is that a 32-bit pile? If it were an Atari Jaguar, it certainly would be. I just hit myself right in the face. <laughs> okay. But you know, you know what I, I like about this a lot is now, if we wanted to, somebody like Graphics Gear could come along and do do overlays like this, where you pull the thing off, you load it, and you know, and because it's not like if Graphics Gear comes up with a whole bunch of very cool different things for this, it's not like um, it's going to take away from the sales of Martin's cases. It adds to it. So if you don't like the 16-bit logos, hopefully somebody else would step up and kind of make some cool ones. Yeah, Muramasa. Muramasa's watching this like, okay, note to self, don't ever fucking send Bob one of my cases before I sell him live. <laughs> um. Uh, tribal science, fuck Reddit. Most people have no idea what they're talking about anyway. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait. All right, I have an idea, but I'm going to have to ruin this template in order to try it. I have ran out of... Hey, what's up, Smoke? Rub it on the blue part so it adheres to the transparent part, but I have to get the blue part... I have to take the blue part off. I, I, I see it, Church, but I don't I don't think that's what you're missing. The blue part's got to come off. So, like, if I, if I do this... That doesn't do shit. So, my idea was to get... Thin scotch tape that's double sided. But I don't have thin scotch tape that's double sided. So I'm going to go overkill. It's probably going to ruin the template, but this is the stuff that you use to like affix pictures to the wall. But just pretend that this was basic cheap scotch double sided tape. This is all I got at the moment, so. If you rub it on the blue part, it'll adhere to the transparent part when you remove it. Then you do it manually on the case. I mean, I just tried that four different ways. But you know what I didn't try yet? This. So. Oh, I forgot to take the tape off. Oh, what an ass. Okay. Oh, did you all just see that? Holy shit. Really? That is some shit right there. Well, maybe I could just... 
I got it too close and it like stuck to it. Like static electricity pulled it up. Well, was going to be a good idea. Oh shit, did that work? Huh. Okay, that worked. That worked perfect. Oh man. That is hysterical. I screwed, I screwed this part up, but I was able to view it. And all right, well, you know what? If you know how to put stickers on, use church's method. If you're an idiot like me, use this method. Just use regular, not this industrial crap. Use the regular double-sided scotch tape. Because you could, I don't know if you could see it on stream. Yeah, you kind of can. You see how the original clear is still there? So that was perfect. Oh man, that's, that is, that actually worked. That's very funny. Do I have another of the smaller stickers left? I think I'm all out, right? Those are there. Yeah, I think that was it, but, well, I like that. So, thin, cheap, scotch, double-sided tape, not this industrial stuff. I literally hang pictures to walls with this. But then flip it, you know, put that on the side, put the label down, line it up so it's perfect. And then that way you could pull the blue off, then just line it up and stick it down. That was great. That was absolutely great. Oh, Jacob, I'm totally happy with people laughing at me. It makes me feel better when I do dumb shit that people laugh with me. It's, a, it's like a couple times that I fell. And no one was there to see it. I felt so bad. I was like, oh, come on. At least if somebody was laughing, this would have been worth it. I sent T some of the videos, though. I don't know if he's still on here, but he's seen me fall upstairs and then burn myself on the grill. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm kind of, I'm kind of impressed. This looks cool as hell. Yeah, <laughs> still here. <laughs> That's not bad at all. It just needs to say high definition graphics. But honestly, I mean, this is, I, I mean this with love. I'm not, there's no sarcasm. I want to see graphics gear step up and do these stickers. I also, um, there's one other person that does very good stickers as well. But seriously, like this is the perfect opportunity for people to work together. If you like this, great. Use Martins. Everybody, you know, you win. But if you want the other one, then that's just perfect. And this was the standoff that was broken in the pre-production version on the other one. So that's good. That's, that is there on the permanent ones. Oh, no. Retired night owl fell off a stepladder in their garage last week. Oh, I hope you didn't hurt yourself. Um, Robert, I mean... This was a, a unit that we used for MD Fourier testing. I, not only does it work, it's probably one of the best Genesis consoles used on the planet at the moment. But uh, I think I'd rather put it back in the other shell because we all know it's knows what's going to happen when we plug a Genesis in. But let's see if I could manage to put this back without screwing it up. So. Monty said they once fell in the shower in the most Looney Tunes way. They were just horizontal midair, and then wham. Almost wish someone had been there to show how hilarious it was. I told that story. That was 100% true. When I went to do the live stream with Mike Chi, showing off the RetroTINK 5X 2.0 firmware, for whatever reason, like, I can't, I gotta brush my teeth before I'm on camera, and I have to shower, as if you guys could ever smell me. It's just a weird OCD thing. I can't just do it stinky. So I was like, oh crap, I'm late for the live stream. Let me, you know, let me jump in the shower. And I, I'm in the shower and all of a sudden I, I go to step out and my feet come out from under me. And exactly like you said, Looney Tunes moment, I'm like hovering in the air. And so, 
like I, it's this weird slow motion, like, you know, like you, you kind of move in midair type of thing. And I busted my ass, but I somehow only landed on my ass. That's it. Like of all the horrible things that could happen when you, you know, you fall in the bathroom, that's, that's it. And I got on stream. And of course, the first thing I had to do was tell everybody that story because my favorite person to make fun of is me. But yeah, that's, uh. Not only was it funny, it was just one of those lucky moments. Like, how did I not get injured? Like, I this is how this is how life alert people get those stupid necklaces they wear. I am having trouble getting that button out. Any suggestions? Okay. I'm always afraid to force anything like this, but I guess, especially with brand new plastic, you got to put a little bit of pressure on it. Okay, and, and we're out. HYP Industries, don't use a tool. Why? What was I missing? I couldn't get my hand. There was not enough pressure on my finger in order to do it. Uh, I used the flat edge of a very thin tweezers. And I'm not criticizing. I'm, I'm honestly asking what I'm missing because I'm very often missing something. <laughs> Ground pounds reduce fall damage. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm still just kind of shocked that that's mostly perfectly centered. It's a little bit like askew, but uh, that's just hysterical. Okay. Misdirection. Yeah, HYP. That's one of these things where if you were here, you would have saw exactly what I saw. There's nothing wrong with it it's just brand new plastic so it was kind of tricky to get the tabs pushed over as it should be because it's brand new rigid plastic oh hey jeff you know how many times i've been at expos having like a 15 minute conversation with somebody and all of a sudden that they make a comment like oh yeah and by the way thanks for the advice on the you know flux capacitor and i'm like you're Jeff? <laughs> like, like, we've been talking for 15 minutes. Your screen name is like, you know, or how would I know what your face is like just from your screen name or something? And that's so kind of funny. Always throw, uh, always throw up your real name so I, I remember who you are. <clears throat> and also so I know who you're, if you're kidding or not. A lot of times people say stuff that's like, that's really funny, but it could also be really mean. Which is it? And if I, if it's somebody I know, then obviously meant as a joke. Yeah, no rush on that. I was obviously really busy with um, uh, with the expo and getting the, all the meetup stuff done. And I'm, you know, I'm still getting over a little cold from that. But um, do I think Retro Gamer Store would do a case for the Neo Geo MVS? So there's already somebody out there um, who I believe only speaks Mandarin Chinese, not English. Who I did, I spoke to through somebody else who was awesome. You know, I, I love people like us that are like that take feedback as compliments, not, you know, not insults. So I was talking to them about their case, which is gorgeous. And they said, well, we have to adjust this. We have to adjust that. And I didn't really have time to follow up, but I bet you if Martin was able to have a conversation with them, maybe they could work together because th the case was basically an MV1B, B as in boy, as in, um, <clears throat> in that looks just like an AES case. And I think that would be perfect if it were slightly adjusted for MV1Cs. But I also think with a little bit of a tooling change, you might be able to have one that also uses uses the original. So we'll have to see. Nomad cases people are talking about. I have no guarantees, um, but it is likely, it is very likely, that it could happen. 
Later, Tribal Science. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Thanks for the advice on how to cook roadkill. I've never done that. Okay. So since we don't have the heat sink to worry about anymore, we just have to worry about the weird angle. I'm actually glad I'm doing this so you could all see that it's equally as annoying to get the controller ports in on both. It's not Martin's case, it's just the design of the Model 1 Genesis. Is that in? That's in. Took a minute, but it's in. Does Retro Gamer Store just sell the 16-bit stickers? I don't think so, but I imagine after seeing um, how badly I, <laughs> I ruined a few, Martin's probably going to make a few extras. So, uh, yeah, pro possibly in, in the short future. So the other thing, too, when you're putting when you're putting the original case back, or if for whatever reason you wanted the metal, I don't know why you would ever want that. Um, oh, you know what? You know, I just remembered before I do this, the reset button on this one has always given me trouble. So let's take a look real quick. It's already open. It's already down to the chassis. T, what do you think? Reflow it? Take it out? Sega Sharua, um, any chance of a solid Genesis shell? I don't think they're planning it on the moment, but... Martin's still here. If, um, maybe he'll respond. And uh, do I have other clear retro game restore cases in my collection? Yes. PC Engine, uh, Super Famicom, and Super Nintendo. Reflow every joint. I did that the other day on a power base converter just to find out it was the chip. So the one thing about putting putting these back together with the original shell is I also have to figure out this directional cartridge port where the Retro Gamer Store one isn't because they both match. So let me just... Did I just do this backwards? No, I did it right. Well, that's surprising. This, this. He must be off working his real job. Not bad, not bad. well look at that lucky guess um i'm going to put this together and i think i'm going to glue the front switch in and then i'm going to reflow the uh, reset button to see if that fixes it somebody also said um to try like deoxit so I could try that, unless unless there are people in the chat that just think that's dumb and I should just replace it with the other one that I have sitting here, which, not a problem. Nice. Reset button... Also good. That's still there. And now we just glue that piece back. Uh, 
All right, so I'm going to grab some super glue. I don't think I'm going to need epoxy. Uh, use this, prop it up. Okay, I think I have it right here. Okay, that's easy enough. I actually don't think that would need epoxy because this piece is going to sit on the switch. So it's not like this piece is going to have much pressure on it after it's the, gr the glue is dried. It's not like there are screws holding it in place. So I think that should be fine. Once again, if anybody has any other ideas, fire away. I'm all ears. Um, what else we got? So T must be working. So I'm just going to do the safer thing and desolder both, um, which should only take a second. Okay. I mean, I know a lot of people say they prefer the smoke better. They're both gorgeous. Look at this shit. This is just so good. Antique mold, I think you're right. I think deoxit will do it. But my issue is I already have both of these open, and the PAL motherboard is going to be way easier to access than this one. So I feel like since I have them both open... Well, you know what? Actually, I don't even know that the PAL one works. So it's... Uh... I guess the right thing to do would be to just test it real quick. So let me do both of those. Um, let me leave this here so you have something nice to look at. And uh, grab a retro tank. Always have one handy. Uh, actually, I think I might have to just do this off camera real quick let me figure it out uh what i would like to show though that looks really cool transparent cartridge and the transparent shell i like that a lot that's pretty neat Have I ever been to Canada? A bunch of times. I have uh, been there um, for work. I've been there for a for Toronto for work. I was there for an expo uh, with Cousin Scott and Nick and Steve a couple of years ago. I think Nick and Steve were there. And um, I also went to visit Renee up in Kappa's Casing, which is in the middle of nowhere. I like Canada. Hate your bacon, though, but everything else about your country is awesome. Good old Triad PSU. 
works with all of these. Blasphemy. Canadian bacon is delish. Canadian bacon is ham. That's it. All right. I got myself an adapter. And I'm going to do the, the, the testing of the reset button off camera because I don't think it's fair to all of you for me to set up for 15 minutes to show you a 30-second thing. But I'll yell it out. Hey, Russ Lyman. What's up, dude? So, uh, Russ, among many other things, paints consoles. So if you have a yellowed console and there is not a retro gamer store or Muramasa shell available for it, send it to Russ. Or, on the opposite, if you get a new shell and you don't know what to do with your old one, send it to Russ. <laughs> Okay, the, uh, the PAL motherboard works, except I just realized I gotta take the case off in order to hit the reset button. Um, you know what, Russ? Let me just pause for a second. I have all of the. Let me put Russ's Instagram on there because I think it's gonna delete all links. So. All right, if, uh, let me know. Uh, yeah, you should just call it ham. <laughs> um, let me know if you get that link. Yeah, always good to see you, dude. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a question I often get when, when people say, well, what do I do with my old shell? And it's easy for people that really want something as beautiful like this, but they don't want to get rid of a, you know, a mint condition other one. Sell it on eBay, recoup some of your costs. But what do you do with the yellow shell? It, you know, people feel bad just throwing it out when you could obviously have some use for it. And that's exactly what I would say. Send it to Russ. <laughs> he'll, he'll make beautiful artwork out of it. The Trogtech N64 Kickstarter is only a thousand dollars away from its goal. Oh man, we all need. Let me put the link in that for a second, because uh, I want to see that win. They're a good group of people. They are not cloners. All right, so Pal motherboard boots. Reset button does work. So let's try. Putting this back, um, I want to leave it with the shell on just so people could uh, could enjoy the view. Okay, now let me try it with my motherboard. Interesting, the reset button's working. So maybe it's the plastic connecting between them. Okay, well, that was a worthy experiment. I didn't sit here messing around with a desoldering gun that I didn't need to. All right, well, let's, I'll try that when we get it back in. I, um, I was doing a, I think it was the, um, 
MSD EXP live stream, basically the uh, using 32x CD games uh, with the Mega SD. I ended up having to use a crappy unmodded Model 2 that I keep just as an example of how bad Model 2s can sometimes be. And uh, the reason was because none of the Genesis consoles I had on hand had a working reset button. And in order to get that to work, you have to boot and then hit reset. So that's odd. Maybe there's something up with that. But let's uh, let's put this together and give it a try then, I guess. Does anybody, when they reassemble Genesis consoles, have like the right place to start? Because I always make sure that the controller ports are lined up. I make sure that it's in place with all the pegs. And then I start from the middle. My favorite console is anyone Russ Lyman has painted. No, I'm kidding. My favorite is the Super Nintendo, because uh, Link to the Past and Super Metroid are my favorite games. And I could probably play those once a year for the rest of my life and not get bored of them. Especially with things like the Sam Miller patch. Oh, boy. Oh, you know, I just uh, I realized I am going to leave a link to the Kickstarter. Hold on one second. There you go. That is the project. Eight days to go with only about a thousand. Yeah, we need to we need to make that happen. And the other thing I was just talking about that I wanted to share was the Sam Miller. Yeah, perfect. If you want to know, and this is not, I swear, this is not just a cheesy self-plug. If you want to hear exactly why you would want to listen to the Sam Miller versions, that interview is, you know, something you'd be very interested in. Okay. I forgot which ones we need without the metal ship. No, that was it. Okay. So watch out for this tab here and obviously for the this cable. So I'm sure somebody here is wondering, why am I bothering doing this if I just told everybody that you probably never need it again? And that's because this is the machine that we use for a lot of MD Fourier testing, as well as a lot of video testing, because it's unmodded but fully recapped. So just for the purpose of keeping it original, I'm keeping it original. There's no other reason other than saying it's completely original. so at the beginning of this stream if anybody was still here i had explained a good way to remember which direction the led goes is red faces one way and white faces the other does anybody remember what i said and uh i'm not trying to act like an asshole school teacher giving you a quiz i legit forgot it's been a long week give me a pass please <laughs>
Red on right? That, oh, man. That sounds like some shit I would say. That truly does. So everything else is in there. Everything else is lining up. The only thing... That's obviously dry enough. Can't believe I just did that on camera. Or did I? Boo. Oh no, I did. Huh. It's so hard doing everything backwards like that. All right, let me grab a power cord and see if I did it right. If you only turn it on for like a second, um, it doesn't blow out the LED, but if you leave it on, I'm positive it's not good for it. Okay, cross your fingers. Cross your fingers. Uh, let me just make sure I get video out of it. Thank you, Craigs. So, um, this is kind of interesting. Um, everything works. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna leave this shell off just to. I'm not in any rush to put this back together, and I just want the super glue to dry. I mean, it, it actually feels like it's dry, but super glue sets within 15 minutes, but dries permanently in, you know, 12-ish hours. But interestingly enough, I just put this back together. Uh, the LED is shockingly correct. Thanks, Matt. And the reset button is now working. So maybe it was just needed to be unstuck and, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to make a double on Chandra. Maybe just wiggling around the rubber a little bit, unstuck it, and, that, and then it works. So that's interesting. If it happens again, I think I would try a deoxid. I think it was the white cable towards the Sega CD output and the red towards the um, the power, which makes sense. But I mean, that could be different based on yours because that LED could have been rotated any direction. So I, I guess whenever you open up your Genesis shell, just look at what that was. So uh finishing up any questions let me get the other ones back here completely clear smoke clear we're pretty much finished up just any questions from anybody i will gladly take Ah, uh, good memory, Jacob. Any interest in getting the LTT screwdriver? Um, no. I already have plenty of screwdrivers. I actually don't know what that is. Was I supposed to know what that is? Um, Matt, I keep going back and forth. Like, every time, every time I see the smoke one just kind of sitting here by itself, I'm like, yeah, that looks awesome. Because, like, in the right light, it would look just like the original, but in different light, you could see through it. So it's like, ooh, that's kind of like a subtle smoke clear type of thing. But then I'm a nerd. I like to see the way stuff works. So seeing the clear one, I don't know. I, I genuinely like them both.
Russ is gonna see if he could add a clear coat to his to get it to look look more clear. Yeah, Russ, would you would you like one of these to experiment on? I'm sure Martin wouldn't mind if I passed one along to an artist that might be able to do some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, you could do up some neat designs and I don't know. Let me know. You got my cell phone number, I'm sure, right? Samicom. So I don't have any other retro gamer store shell here that's the that's the problem i would have loved to have put them next to each other but they're all off with friends and i sent a whole bunch to metal jesus because i was hoping he would spread the love and he did so thank you to jason for that all right russ if i don't um if you don't have my number i'll just message you within 10 minutes of this being over uh, i'll message you on instagram i think i think that's your place Robert, thank you so much. It was uh, it was really cool to meet you too as well. I love meeting people at expos. I'm, I'm not just saying that. And the expo's over. I'm probably not going to be at one for at least another year. So that's how you know I'm not full of shit. <laughs> I'm not promoting anything when I say this. I absolutely love meeting people there. Everybody is freaking awesome. Um, and it's funny too. A lot of people who had never really been to an expo mentioned that to me over the weekend. Like, everybody is so nice. And I was like, yeah, it's... the, the assholes that you see on social media really represent such a small portion of the community big time most of us are just just good people like nerding out being nerds really nothing nothing else to it in a nice way no miramasa i'm not i'm not i'm kind of not going to any other expo uh for a while unless unless they make sure to get me out there because i um i just spent way too much money on them over the years and people are, you know, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've done it, but it's just one of those things where it's like, you work really hard to promote an expo. And I'm not talking about Retro World. I, I love Lance and Chris. I will mop the floor for them if they ask me to. I owe them big time. But not Retro World and me. I spend a lot of time and a lot of money promoting and talking about it. And I get there and a lot of them I've never got to thank you. I I, uh, I got uh, somebody who brought significantly less people than me got paid an insane amount of money to be there. I got nothing, so I just I'm done. I'm done with expos for a long time. I've lost way too much money, and the only thing I have to show for it is meeting a lot of amazing people, which is great. But that doesn't keep the lights on. It might be a douchebag thing to say, but I mean, you know, we all as much as we want to do this stuff for free, you gotta you know, you gotta pay the bills. Yeah, Retired Night Owl, that's a podcast is coming out soon where I'm talking about that. Um, let's see, do I prefer SNES, RGB, or S-Video? Whatever TV I'm using. So if I'm using a monitor that can... I'll, I use the highest signal that the display I'm using can handle. So if I'm using a consumer TV that only has S-Video, it's awesome. But if I can run RGB, I run RGB. Um, is Voltar a good guy, or is he just playing around? Voltar has one of the biggest hearts of any human I've ever met. He's also kind of an arrogant ass at the same time, but I think sometimes he just makes mistakes and loses his shit, which, you know, we all do that, him more than others, but other times he's being Lord Voltar, and people have a hard time telling the difference. Partially his fault, but no, I... Zach's a really good dude. I wish people knew. I wish people knew him behind the scenes, or like I do behind the scenes. You might still not like him. You might still get mad at him, but for totally different reasons. Um, Retro JB, hello from the UK. Um, yeah, I think I did. I vaguely remember talking to you in Portland, but that. So the one thing about Portland that was amazing was I don't think I walked five feet without somebody coming up to talk to me, which is good, not bad. That's not a complaint. I love that. But I also forgot half the people I talked to. I guess I had like a five minute conversation with Chris from Displaced Gamers and didn't remember it until he told me about that in the interview, which sucks because I love Chris, but there's just a million people around. <laughs> Voltar takes bubble bats. He's a teddy bear. I wouldn't call him a teddy bear. Ron, the handlebar gamer. That's a bear. That's one of my bears right there. But, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jacob. It's very nice of you. I mean, Muramasa, you could also politely... I know you mean that in a good way, but, like, people all over the place are different. So that's not unexpected at all, I guess. 
Who's my favorite rapper? Oh, shit. That's a hard one. Oh, man. I mean, I'd, I've liked anything Dr. Dre has ever had a part of, but I don't necessarily... His songs aren't necessarily my favorites. They're amazing. But, uh, like, person in the rap world would be Dr. Dre. DMX's voice is basically like a heavy metal guitar, so I love him. I know a lot of his lyrics didn't didn't age the way people would have wanted, and if you didn't grow up in that era, you would think his songs mean something totally different, so I understand why people have a problem with him, but his voice, just the sound of his voice, I mean, it's like a heavy metal song, but his voice is the guitar, so that's that's pretty close. I don't know, that's a hard one. I don't know if I can answer that. Creopolis. Oh, man, I was so bummed when I didn't get to go to Brazil. I have so many friends from there. I just, uh, that was a bummer. No one's fault. Uh, it's just a bunch of stuff happened. Everybody's okay, but I was afraid people weren't going to be okay. It was a whole thing. I'll tell the whole story one day. It's not a bad story with not a bad ending, but it's just boring. So I'll skip it for now. I'm stranded on an island with only one album to spin. What is that album? I mean... The second album I, I wrote that we never finished because that sounds like the perfect purgatory. I get to hear everything I always wanted to be but couldn't. <laughs> um, RWL, you know, you have a way of wording things where I, I never know if you're ESL and don't know how to word it right or if you're just coming into these comments and being rude, but it's kind of rude. If you don't really understand it, why would you throw some negativity around? Um, I guess we're pretty much finishing up. Um, any other questions? Any other things? Let me center this just a little bit more. Maybe I'll make this the, uh, the new thumbnail for it or something. I still... I still also... After this entire one, and I don't know, or after this entire time, I don't know which one I like better. I, I have no clue. I'm going to have to leave it up to you to decide which is good. I have no, I have no preference. There's no right answer. They're both awesome in their own completely different ways. Well, thank you all. Uh, these, uh, can I show the bottom one more time? Yeah, T, you guys never mind pulling out the bottom. Retrobite or reshell? Reshell it all the time, no doubt. Yeah, that does look awesome. All right, you're all the best. Thank you for keeping me company during these. Thank you to Martin from Retro Gamer Store. Um, and uh, we, will, uh, we will catch you all again soon.